<laughs> oh, sorry. Hey, how you doing? I, I'm Larry Mack. We're here with Ross Valerie. Ross, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to hang out with here in Tucson with the incredible uh, technology we have in 2024. Um, thanks a lot. I appreciate you spending time with us. It's a go. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here, especially given the fact that uh, your station, KL. PX is actually playing my song. You know, it's a really, really cool grooving version of a lowrider. Um, I agree with you, Larry. So what what made you pick lowrider uh, to do uh, a cover of? It was truly a fluke. Uh, I had just uh, a couple of years ago, I, I had uh, a session in which uh, four or five people were in the room recording the basics for uh, Incident at Nishabur, which is a cover tune, right? And of course, uh, subsequently we have Senor Blue. And I thought, you know, there's this other, this other tune I've always liked. Thought about maybe I'd like to cover it. They said, what? I said, lowrider. And everybody said, let's do it, you know, including my production partners jacob stowe engineer and eric levy fine musician we decided to do it. it was a fluke and it just so happened that the right people were in town at the right time and and there you have it that th this is one thing that happened quickly just on a whim and it turned out so well didn't it, it it's very good it's very cool if you got a really funky groove to it and it's it's what I like about it. What I don't like about covers is when somebody does a note for note cover of a song. I want to hear a cover done differently in the style right. of the musician who's doing it. And and you've definitely made it your own. I did, but 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 in another sense, I really wanted to honor uh, the feel and the texture, and even some of the recording. Uh, some of the production techniques that were used in that, you know, we did expand the arrangement a little bit and there's a lot of jamming at the end. So the song is definitely longer than the original piece, but we wanted to honor the flavor of that, the tempo, the key, uh, the groove, uh, the bass part with an exception of a few little notes is just straight up and so are, so are the drums and having harmonica in there by less survivor man Stroud, who happened to be in the area. And we, we just really wanted to honor the feeling of that song. It's not note for note, but I, I think that maybe the writers uh, of the song would be uh, uh, pleased, would be complimented by it. So when you, when you cover a song, I, I'm not obviously in your side of the music business, do you have to reach out and get permission from the publisher to do that uh, how does that work or the original artist my understanding is once you put out hard copies hard product then you you um either make arrangements or, or give notice but when you're just copying a song for digital release of any kind <clears throat> you don't need permission it's pretty straightforward so is this going to be on your new album all of the above it is on the album oh it is on the album okay i've not heard the whole thing as of yet but it's going to what be out, I, what, June 20th? What I recommend, Larry, and what I recommend <clears throat> to your listeners and viewers is if you haven't heard the album, uh, uh, wind up the cat, throw out the clock, sit down with your favorite headphones or sound system, turn off your phone, and listen to the whole thing from top to bottom. It's, I will. I'll spend some time with it. And, yeah, Low Rider is on the album, and it's... Oh, the fourth single release, but more importantly, it's the fourth video release. I have a YouTube channel that currently has four music videos for the songs that have been released. The best way for everybody to find out or to find what they, they want in terms of streaming or downloading or music videos is simply to go to rossvalerie.com. And you'll get all the links, whether it's Spotify or Amazon, Apple, and my YouTube channel. Um, I'm especially not only pleased with the release of the album and, and the way uh, that people seem to be responding to a very surprising different thing is that the music videos are just awesome. I have to say they're awesome and they're worth seeing. How, how involved are you in the making of the music videos? I know sometimes... Uh, bands will hire other people to do treatments, but then sometimes the musicians are very involved nowadays, especially since music videos are more seen now on YouTube 
and stuff like that other than MTV, which plays reality shows now? Well, the gentleman that's doing all of the music video production is named Michael Cotton. And he and Prairie Prince, who appears as a drummer on one of the songs and who has done all the artwork, uh, he, uh, Prairie Prince and Michael Cotton go way back to the tubes being the co-creators of their visual image. I was very happy to have gotten a hold of Michael. He's uh, continuing to do music videos for all of the songs, and there's four of them currently released. But, uh, to answer your question, uh, I would say that I'm involved in, in describing to him sometimes in advance what I see for these songs that are instrumental for the most part. And he uh, has this, well, he's, first of all, he's very inspired by the music. And I could say, he sees what I hear. I hear what he sees. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I make suggestions uh, in, in advance, uh, just describe what I see, and he runs with the ball. Sometimes he just goes at it, and, and I have the ability to interject and make suggestions. And when I do suggest changes, he goes, thank you, because I was wondering about that myself. So I have a really good interactive and simpatico uh, approach to the music videos with Michael Cotton. Uh, but the main point is he's so inspired by it and what he sees, I'm sometimes amazed by. So this is your first solo album, am I, am I correct? This is my first solo album ever. So and, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, you've been obviously in a musician, a professional musician going on decades, you know, you're obviously busy with the storm journey and, and some various other projects you've been involved in. Why so long for a solo album from you? Well, with all the other projects, including practically a lifelong career with journey, uh, that was enough for me musically. And, and, and it was, it was demanding, not in a negative way, but, that it's been quite a career and quite a amount, amount of energy went into everything that I did with the band. And when I would get home off tour, I wouldn't be interested in looking at my instrument. I was going to take a break and visit with family and friends who I, I see so seldomly. Um, being away is, it can be difficult. You have to give something up to be away and be on tour. Mm -hmm. And, so when I was home, I was enjoying the company of my friends and my family and not necessarily uh, musically motivated. But just a few years ago, I began thinking, you know, I have all this material that's been uh, sitting either complete or incomplete, but unheard and unfinished. And I just began uh, going at it. So some people may think that this album is the sum total of my past. It, that's it. Uh, actually, it isn't. Ever since before the album was released, I've been working on more material, more original material. There's still a stockpile there and more uh, new material and even some other cover tunes. So why, why so long? I just it took a while to get back at it. And and once I began uh, uh, finishing these songs, it was just uh, very simply to finish what I started. And, so, and it, go oh, ahead go ahead you were saying i apologize i'm with you okay so you you mentioned a few moments ago prairie prince and stuff like that who else is involved on this uh release with you well what other musicians in in a long list of prominent musicians that i'm just so blessed to have their time in recording this material uh for instance there are six songs with drums there are six different drummers oh, okay. prince on tom land Steve Smith on Nightflower, Paul Spina on Incident at Nishabor, Celso Alberti, a local Brazilian drummer on Windmill, uh, Gregor Rico on uh, uh, Lowrider, and Walfredo Reyes Jr., former Santana drummer, is on Wild Kingdom. There are four guitarists on the album. There's Neil Sean, uh, his son, Miles Sean. I've on, seen Miles play. That kid's a great guitar player. And and then there's George Tickner, original Journey member who plays guitar on Nightflower, and he he he's a co-writer. And then there is um, Brennan Black, 
of local fame and Mariah Carey fame, who performs on Lowrider, Incident, and Mishabor, and, and uh, Senior Blue. And then I play all the guitars on Windmill. Oh, wow. So, and, and uh, Mark Russo of the Doobie Brothers and the Yellow Jackets is quite prominent on many of the songs. Uh, Les Stroud, better known as Survivor Man on Discovery Channel, plays harmonica on Lowrider. And, but there's uh, two other people I haven't mentioned that are even more prominent than all those uh, uh, great, great musicians. First of all, Eric Levy is uh, my co producer, mm -hmm. uh, a fine, fine keyboard player. And along with uh, Jacob Stowe, the engineer, Eric it appears on all of the material and he's my musical cohort. So I began my project, recording projects with the uh, sincerity about 10 or 12 years ago and began with Eric. But there's another person who appears on quite a bit of the music that I began with as well. And then that is Carl Parazzo, the master percussionist with uh, Santana. He, he, uh, he figures quite prominently in the material as well. So, is so there a there's big variety of players, and my idea was which players would be best for each song. And Sounds like there's what, a little bit of a Latin flavor to the album, too. There certainly is between uh, Wild Kingdom and Windmill, and of course, the, the cover song of the Santana song, uh, uh, Incident in Nishpur. There is a Latin flavor there. Um, so, you might think that three songs fall somewhat under that general category but uh, um, other than that all the other songs are completely different especially lowrider the fluke but any i've named it quite a bit of different musicians but my purpose and my my endeavor mainly has been as a as a composer and arranger and producer so it's not necessarily an album that features the bass all the time. You may hear songs in which the bass part is actually sitting in the mix and is supporting what the song needs. You'll hear other songs or other sections in which I'm jumping out and, and uh, playing something more expressive, lead work, et cetera, et cetera. But I treat all the instruments equally as, as to what the song needs. It's, it's, I'm an impressionist and my focus has been on writing and arranging rather than being the featured bass player. So you mentioned a moment ago, there's a lot of other stuff. Obviously, all of the above is out now. Are you planning on some other solo albums after this? Oh, yeah. I plan on releasing, continuing to release material. And uh, I have been continuing to arrange and record and produce more stuff. So uh, if people rightfully think that I've got a really broad spectrum of styles with this album. Uh, I would like to say that the horizon is going to expand into even yet different areas of music. So uh, all of the above is is not the complete story. There will there, there is more music uh, to come. I think you kind of already answered this with your, with your answer so far. But the name all of the above, where did that come from? Well, first of all, it has to do with uh it might be obvious the variety of material mm -hmm. there's there's so many different styles represented so it, it's it, it's not one genre my genre is no genre so you get a selection of various different songs to appreciate hopefully and secondarily i'm playing instruments that have not been heard in recordings of me before uh uh, fretless bass on two songs, that being Nightflower and No One Wins the War. Uh, I'm, I'm playing, I recorded the keyboard parts for uh, a Wild Kingdom because that's the instrument I wrote it on, the, the calliope sound, and the bass came later. Um, I'm playing guitars on Windmill because that's the song, the song I wrote, that's the instrument I wrote the song on. So secondarily somewhat multi-instrumental but it, it's, it's not like okay here he, here he is he does everything no i i did what the songs needed and uh thirdly uh 
uh, the meaning of all of the above has to do with all the different musicians that have appeared. So it's 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 a it's a big package. It's a buffet. It's a smorgasbord. Uh, it's a big deck. Pick a card. I can't expect that everyone will like all the songs, um, and it's not important to me. Uh, and my motivation is to simply have the opportunity to share the music. It's not a big career move, but and it's certainly uh, kind of bold. It certainly it's certainly uh, unconventional to put out an album that doesn't necessarily represent popular music or represent that kind of music that I'm known for. It's, I'm sure a lot of people are surprised, but I hope they're pleasantly surprised. Any, uh, are you going to tour? Um, touring. That's a, that's a big job, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I would like to eventually play at least locally, if not regionally, and uh, putting together a whole production for representing this music is, it that would be a substantial challenge, but I, I'd like to begin by streaming uh, performances uh, from my facility here, from oh, my wow. big living. Yeah, let's start. Let's start at home, <laughs> sort of like um, Daryl's house. Yes, absolutely. That, that would be fun. But anyhow, I, I would like to perform, but that's a whole other endeavor that I haven't put much energy towards. Uh, I'm still concentrating on where I began. Uh, for the first time is uh, committed to writing and arranging and producing music. So maybe someday I'll hit a stage. Well, hopefully we will. And hopefully we'll see you here in Arizona. That would be great to see you. Yeah. I met you. Uh, I, I don't even want to say how long ago you were touring with the storm at the time. And uh, oh. I ran, I ran into you in a hallway at a radio station in Phoenix. And yeah. of course I knew you from a journey prior to that. And I walked mm -hmm. right into you. We bumped into each other. I always laugh about this. And I said the dumbest thing. I looked at you. Go, oh, you're in Journey. And you, go, yes, I was. <laughs> yes, that I... was our that was our interaction at the time. Oh, well, there's been a few fluctuations. I yeah. was, I was, you know. Yeah, this was when you were touring with the Storm, and I'm trying to remember what band you were opening up for. But you came down. Uh, and uh, but I, I've always been a big fan of yours and uh, loved everything you did. And I love I can't wait to listen to the whole album. I love your cover of Lowrider. It's I'm going to spend some time this afternoon yeah. with the album. Hey, take the time to uh, turn off the phone and listen to the whole thing with the lights out of your eyes closed. Uh, yeah, the storm uh, was uh, opening for a Brian Adams tour. Yes, that's, that's what. It was. what yeah, yep. it's uh, I'm, I'm sure that after all the touring you've done that. You, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you for taking the time with me today. Oh, no problem, Ross. And I appreciate you spending time with us. Again, RossValerie.com is where people can find out everything about you. There you go. Straight up. All right. Check out the new album, All of the Above, and do what Ross said. I'm going to put the headphones on and listen to it tonight. Yeah. Oh, yes. And uh, every time you listen, you'll hear something different, too. There's some. There's a lot going on in there. Well, Enjoy I, 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 I got a vibe that I'm, I'm going to be kicking back by the pool, kind of listening to it, too. Oh, pal. All right. Hey, Ross Valerie, thank you so much. Hold on. We're going to get some uh, one more thing from you. But Ross Valerie, new album, All of the Above, out now on all the services. And you could hear the cover of Lowrider and a few others once I listen to the whole album right here on 96.1 KLPX. Thank you, Larry.